a killer instinct, a champion's mentality, and the highest level of skill. All of these qualities may exist separately, but only by combining them can one become unbeatable like Shavkat Rachmanov. To date, Nomad is one of the best welterweights on the planet, and his 17-0 record and 100% early win rate instill icy terrors in the hearts of his enemies, making them refuse to fight. But what is the secret of such success? Has Shavkat always been an undefeated machine, destroying everyone in his path? It's time to find out. Now we are going on a long journey through the career of the strongest fighter from Kazakhstan and look at his best performances. Maybe we'll be the ones to finally understand how does he do it. Like all great warriors, Shavkat was born and raised in harsh conditions. Most of the future fighter's childhood was spent in the south of Uzbekistan in the town of Shurchi, and only when he turned 16, his family moved to Karaganda, Kazakhstan. At first, Rachmanov and his family had to share a room, living in a relative's apartment, but gradually things started to get better. His mother worked in the bazaar, and he and his brother helped her, in parallel practicing sports. At first, the guys had enough training in the gymnastics hall. Later, boxing appeared in his life, in which Shavkat was trained by five different coaches. After a few months of training, he realized that in MMA, he would have much more opportunities to develop his sports career, so he decided to tighten up his wrestling and start competing at the amateur level. In the manner, Nomad soon became a world champion and later an Asian champion. During his performances, he lost two fights to the same opponent. The opponent with the strongest wrestling base defeated the prospect twice. Not disappointed in mixed martial arts, Rachmanov continued practicing and made his professional debut in 2014. The path of the humble Kazakh guy in the cage began immediately with the Russian Major M1 League, where many outstanding fighters from Russia once competed. To welcome the talented newcomer to the new level, M1 management gave Rachmanov Adam Surov, a Russian who had already won his debut fight by submission. Adam didn't even think about exchanging with Shavkat in the stand-up. As soon as he got close, he flew into his legs like an arrow, but left his neck open and got caught in a tight guillotine. Shavkat was unable to fully secure the hold, so the opponent still managed to get out, but Nomad was not going to lie down and made a spectacular sweep. As soon as he got back on his feet, Surav tried to wrestle again and make a takedown. The throw was unsuccessful. The Kazakh got his arm and could have gone for the armbar, but instead decided to slam the triangle. After struggling a bit, Adam tapped, the first victory in the professional career of Nomad. Just a month after a successful start, Rachmanov had another fight in the M1 arena, this time against the menacing-looking Brazilian Marcus Vinicius. The fight ended in the first round with a victory for the future UFC fighter, but the stoppage was a bit early in my opinion. Without further ado though, let's move on to the M1 tournament dated May 2015. That night, Rachmanov was put up against an opponent who was far more dangerous than his previous opponents. Paul Bartosz Hirek had a 4-1 record and all of his victories were submissions. Everyone was wondering how easily Shavkat could handle this level of grappling though. Bartosz threw an amplitude takedown in the opening seconds and got into a comfortable position. He was not going to wait for a miracle and opened the season of hunting for the prospect's extra limbs. Trying to tear off an arm or legs, the pole was so engaged that at one moment Shavkat changed his position and found himself on top where he began to strike and tried to get back on his feet. The grappler, confident in his skills, immediately went for the knee bar but Nomad freed his leg and started hammering the guy with his punches. The GNP didn't seem fatal at first, but after another blow, Bartosz passed out. The referee, who did not immediately realize it, allowed Rachmanov to land a couple more punches and only then stopped the fight. Continuing to perform at a pretty high pace, Shavkat soon took part in the M1 Battle of Nomads 5 tournament, where he was already in the co-main event of the evening. Once again, the opposite corner of the arena was a rather experienced representative of Poland. Michal Vincic had a 5-2 record and a good win in his last fight. Finally, he managed to see the Kazakh Unicum stand-up, though it lasted only 10 seconds. But what kind of stand-up, though? Rachmanov hit a jab and then suddenly threw out a left hook, from which the opponent was immediately staggered, and he decided to save himself on the canvas, but was immediately caught in side control. In an attempt to get out from under the Kazakh, Michal got caught in a terrible guillotine. There were only two ways out of such a powerful takedown, tap immediately or go to the other side. Michal almost without thinking chose to tap and gave his opponent another victory. 
The next time the rising star from Kazakhstan pleased fans with his appearance was in April 2016, when in the main event of the evening, he faced powerful compatriot Adil Baranbayev, who had 13 wins and 16 performances. The bout was not the most dynamic, and among its highlights were Shavkat's demonstrations of a great tie clinch and his jiu-jitsu skills, thanks to which he sweeped and later choked out a strong opponent at the end of the second segment. Looking to make up for lost time, this nomad was preparing to fight in just two months, and once again, he was given a veteran as his opponent. Brazilian Marcelo Brito, his confrontation with such a monster could hardly count even on his strongest side, grappling. Brito was scared to death to work with Rachmanov in the stand-up and barely threw punches. When the Brazilian missed a couple of punches and felt their power, he immediately went to the primary task and rushed for a takedown, but was stopped by a light sprawl. Shavkat was not going to move into wrestling and expected to finish it all on the hands, and he soon succeeded. During this closely distanced match, the Kazakh powerfully punched the liver with his left hand and Marcello immediately folded an ass. Shavkat continued to build on his phenomenal winning streak, but he had to yet face a truly top-notch opponent. Two months after Brito's knockout, Rachmanov faced a rather interesting opponent in the person of Pak John Jung. Currently competing in the UFC at the Kazakhstan MMA Federation Tournament, in the world's best promotion, the Iron Turtle is doing just fine, and he is very close to getting into the top 15, but at the time of the confrontation with Shavkat, the guy's record was only 1-2 and, and nobody knew about him. The meeting was held at interim weight. Pak's main strength to this day remains grappling, but even so, the Korean was inferior to Rachmanov's in the parterre. Almost the meeting took place entirely on the ground, and Iron Turtle was on top for a long time. But it was purely a formality, because the Kazakh threw so many different submissions that the opponent barely had the strength to catch his breath. The most dangerous seemed to be an armbar attempt, which Nomad himself refused to finish. The second round began with a stand-up fight, where the future star was again stronger. Realizing that there was little chance to a stand-up, Pak rushed back into the fight. The bleeding success was replaced by a terrible ending when Shavkat went behind his back and closed the choke. At first, the pressure was on the chin, but then the hand began to press already on the neck, and the unrealistically resistant Korean still gave up. After a tough win over Pak, Shavkat unexpectedly was out for a full year, and in 2018, he returned once again appearing at the M1 tournament. This time, the matchmakers wanted to see the Kazakh execute undefeated Georgian Levin Solodvinik, and Shavkat updated his record by closing out a triangle choke in the second round. Just a few weeks after that, Rachmanov received an offer to fight for the Kazakhstan MMA Federation welterweight belt. Obviously, you can't refuse such opportunities, and Rachmanov signed the contract. The fighter Feridun Odilev, going on a seven-fight undefeated streak, was the champion. Now, that's a really good test. The opening round was slow, but also very tense, and the guys worked at long and medium range. Taking the episode, Rachmanov increased his pressure and pinned Terminator to the cage, and he responded with a suplex, but couldn't. Shavkat, who had proceeded to his wrestling, not only defended himself, but also scored a knockdown himself. With the gong, Feridun was lightning fast with a takedown and was able to find himself inside control from where he almost got caught by a dangerous Kimura. After miraculously escaping from Shavkat's arms, Odilev was unable to go back to wrestling and began to work in the stand-up. This seemed to be in his not in best interest, but the fighter was able to shock everyone and sent Shavkat to a knockdown. A swinging right flew into his head and the main hope of Kazakhstan spent the next time on his back, eating dozens of the most powerful punches of his opponent. Both fighters came out to the third round barely alive, but paradoxically, Odilov was even more tired than the Kazakh himself. Taking advantage of the lack of his strength, Rachmanov had a couple of attempts at a beautiful throw, got out to mount, and took revenge on Feridun for everything by hammering him on the stoppage. That night, Shavkat became the champion, but this fight is still one of the most difficult of his career. It took the young champion a long time to recover from such a tough confrontation with Feridun Ovalev, but he returned to the cage for the first defense against the native of Kyrgyzstan. Rachmanov fought an uncompetitive first round, and then his opponent simply refused to fight. During the time Nomad was away from M1, the promotion did not forget him, and after his dominating performance, which became the 10th victory in his career, offered him to fight for the vacant title in his welterweight division. The second challenger for the title was the not-so-famous Russian Danila Prikasa, with a long series of five wins. The fight for the belt became the main event of the tournament. 
Both fighters worked very hard with their kicks to the body, but there was no equality in pure boxing. Shavkat, due to his superior skills and huge height advantage, outworked his opponent and dodged his swinging overhands and hooks. The guys spent the end of the segment in a passive clinch, but in the next five minutes, Rachmanov started with takedowns and guards. Danila tried his best to tie up his opponent, but skillful grappler Shavkat still got out of his opponent's clutches and got up, ending with lots of heavy punches. At some point, Danila's head couldn't take it and he passed out, and from a couple more punches, he woke up again and started to defend himself. But the referee stopped this nightmare and saved the fighter a few years of his life, and the new M1 welterweight champion, Shavkat Rachmanov. After a relatively easy win over Danila, Rachmanov made just one defense of his belt against the Brazilian veteran, who he knocked out within the first five minutes of the fight. There was nowhere for Rachmanov to continue to grow as a fighter in the Russian arenas, so just a couple months after his 12th win, the world of martial arts was abuzz with exciting news. Shavkat's UFC welterweight debut Shavkat's debut opponent changed three times for different reasons, and finally the guy's opponent was the insanely experienced Brazilian cowboy Alex Oliveira on a two-fight win streak. Oliveira felt relaxed, but only until Shavkat showed his full power. He absorbed all the space behind him and was just going for the Brazilian, about to rip his head off. Pinning Alex to the cage, Rachmanov charged with a harsh knee, but he made a mistake and soon found himself pinned to the cage. The Brazilian began pressing his opponent with all his weight and also made two unsuccessful attempts to save Shavkat. When the cowboy went for his legs for the third time, Rachmanov did not forgive him and for this mistake. In the best of traditions, the nomad put his left arm under the opponent's neck and with it flew into the guard, closing the choke. It took Alex only a few seconds to realize it was over. The clapping sound meant only one thing, Shavkat successfully debuted in the UFC. The debut turned out to be very confident. Despite the differences in experience, Shavkat was easily able to find gaps in the Cowboys' defense and finish him off. The management was also impressed with the skills of the talent from Kazakhstan, but decided not to rush the top 15 contenders and threw Rachmanov another test in the form of another veteran from South America, Michel Prezeres. Shavkat, with his 6'1 height, seemed like a giant next to Michel. It looked as if Michel had no chance to reach his opponent's head, and at first, it looked that way, but then the veteran got in close range and initiated a clinch. Realizing that it's possible to stand like that endlessly, Rachmanov performed a beautiful takedown and controlled Trader from the guard until the end of the segment, throwing light punches and exhausting his cardio. The Brazilian did come out heavily battered for the second segment, and Nomad was only getting stronger. Midway through the five-minute period, he charged a hard kick and nearly caught his jaw, then easily defended against a couple of takedown attempts. At this point, Prezeres' fate was already sealed. Being tired, he didn't pose a threat to the Cossack in Preter, and so Rachmanov got out behind his back pretty quickly and held a choke, ending the veteran's UFC career. Already after his victory, Shavkat began to be seriously discussed. Many fans from the USA liked the cold-blooded and smiling guy who went into the octagon and simply killed his opponents, and afterwards wore a hat made of wolf fur, which maximally complimented his image. Obviously, the main admirer of Rachmanov's work was the well-known Laura Sanko. In the early 2022, Nomad received the name of his new opponent, who was a native of Guyana, Carlston Harris, who had two wins in the UFC. In fact, Rachmanov is one of the examples of a maximally balanced MMA fighter. In every performance, he shows his skills in all areas and the opponent is necessarily weaker in one of them. Occupying the center of the cage, the Kazakh chased Harris, who was fidgeting and afraid of attacks. At the equator of the round, the guys had a micro-exchange of punches, and then Shavkat got into a clinch. After holding his opponent with his back to the net for a bit, Rachmanov gave away to the position, but skillfully took advantage of the situation and landed a beautiful takedown. It is worth noting Carlston's credit, who sharply got out and returned to the stand-up position, but later regretted it. Just a few seconds after the wrestling episode, Rachmanov hit a virtuoso punch from the turn, sending the guy to the floor. A little bit of finishing the opponent on the ground, and the victory was in Shavkat's pocket. Surprisingly, Shavkat was not given a single bonus for his two filigree victories, but for the knockout of Harris, he was finally awarded with a performance of the evening. Shortly after the victory, the fighter was added to the ranking of the strongest welterweights on the last line, but it did not increase the number of potential opponents. Most of the roster was obviously afraid of Shavkat, and we can understand them. Nobody wants to fight against an undefeated fighter. However, the matchmakers soon found a suitable fighter anyway. The lucky guy was a leader of the weight class in terms of the time in the cage and fights held, Neil Magny from the 10th line. 
Just a few years before this fight, Michel Chiesa had shown that powerful wrestling with top control and light punches worked well against Magny, so Shavkat did a copy-paste and simply replicated the Mavericks' game plan. For the entire first round, the Kazakh held Neil down with ease, not allowing him to do anything. In the second segment, though, the stand-up exchanges lasted just 30 segments, and then Rachmanov shortened the distance and was on top of his opponent again. Total control continued until the last seconds of the period when Shavkat went all in. He knew he was going to win the round anyways, so he decided to take his chances and threw the guillotine he had once used in the UFC. It worked successfully, and Shavkat won the fight. The fighter from Kazakhstan was again awarded a bonus for performance of the evening and his position in the rankings seriously improved. Now Rachmanov was in the top 10. The guy needed to move forward, but the situation with the lack of rivals remained stable. This was the case until the end of the year when Shavkat was paired with the powerful Jeff Neal, who had climbed into the top spot thanks to his win over Vicente Luke. The duel between the two young tops was organized for January, but suddenly Hands of Steel withdrew due to injury. March was chosen as the new date of the fight. This time, the opponent bailed the weigh-in by as much as four pounds, so the fight moved to an interim category and Shavkat was promised 30% of the opponent's fees. In exchanges at middle distance, Hands of Steel was punching cannon blows from the backhand and painting his opponent's face, and he was defending himself better than ever against wrestling. Rachmanov relied on bloody punches and especially the tie clinch, which has been one of his trump cards. In each round, Nomad managed to catch his opponent in his arms and inflict a couple of terrible knees, but in pure forms, there was equality between them. The third round almost had an upset. Neil shook Shavkat and went for the takedown, but the experienced M1 champion recovered and soon returned the favor. With one precise punch, he sent his opponent into a standing knockout and then ripped his face with elbows near the cage. Somehow, Neil miraculously withstood the tonnage of punches, but Nomad decided to change his tactics and went behind his back, from where he closed the choke while standing on his feet, and the number 7 ranked fighter covered in blood surrendered. This is definitely the best fight of the evening. Right now, Rachmanov's future looks confusing. He is ranked 6th in the top and is getting close to the main fights of his life, but no athlete in the top 5 wants to fight this monster. For that reason, Shavkat is now looking for opponents that he can at least make a name on and a meeting with middleweight Kelvin Gastelum, who is coming down from middleweight, would be ideal. However, the former title challenger has been injured and withdrew from the fight. I don't know who Nomad will fight next, and I highly doubt that this opponent will be above him in the rankings, but I'm convinced that a couple more early wins in this incredible style and the management will have nothing left but to give Shavkat a title fight. 17 fights, 17 wins. 100% finishes, knockouts, and submissions. He is crazy. If even Colby Covington got his title fight with one win, how could Shavkat and his royal win streak be any worse? Let me know what you think about that in the comments section, though. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like it as well. Bye.